While we're fighting over funding, we're also building. And it's my hope to have this done completed, all 500 to 550 miles, uh, to have it either renovated or brand new by election time. I mean, the Democrats don't want it because they don't want open borders. And yet, every one of those Democrats approved the wall, or a fence, or very, very substantial barriers. President Trump speaking from the Oval Office last hour on the need for a border wall and saying he doesn't know when the government will reopen. Chris Wilson is a former pollster for the Cruz campaign, the Ted Cruz campaign, and and CEO of WPA Intelligence. And Zach Friend is a Democratic strategist and former spokesman for Obama for America and the author of a book on message, How a Compelling Narrative Will Make Your Organization Succeed. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us this morning and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. So you just heard a snippet of that, but uh, the president had quite a lot to say at the White House this morning. Uh, he said he started off talking about interest rates. He thought they had risen too fast, but that we would get that fixed. And he also talked about the need for a border wall, as you heard just there. And you heard him call it a wall, a fence and a barrier in the same sentence. Um, does it make any difference to Democrats what he calls it? And uh, Zach, let me start with you. You know, I, I don't really think so. I, I think that one of the things uh, that's actually interesting to point out is that the president has had uh, the, the House and the Senate for the last couple of years. I think that one of his real issues isn't actually with the Democrats, but with his own party as far as support for the wall, the fence, the guard, however it is he wants to call it. And the Democrats were willing to come to a deal last year in exchange for DACA, and it was uh, shot down. So I think that there is a deal to be worked on border security. There probably is some sort of deal to be worked that would allow uh, the president to save face on this. I just think what it needs now is an adult in the room. I think that the only people that care about the blame game are people in Washington and not the American people. They just want the government reopened and they want a deal to get worked out sooner than later. Okay, well, Chris, uh, who is the adult in the room? Someone has to step forward and and move a, some sort of a compromise forward. It's the only way it's going to get done. So who is it? Well, it is the only way it's going to get done. And I don't know that right now there's anybody who's got a compromise that is acceptable to both sides. I mean, really, with Donald Trump, he has uh, he made his number one commitment when he's running for office to build the wall. And I don't think he's in a situation where he can get himself out of that. You also have kind of what's going on between Congress and the White House. Well, you've really had several presidents now in a row who have expanded the regulatory state without bringing Congress into the, into the realm there. And we all learned in elementary school that Congress is supposed to be the one that passes laws, but all they've been passing lately is just a buck. And so from that, if, to be able to bring them together and get out of the shutdown, and, and I don't know that I agree with Zach that really the American people are paying a lot of attention to it right now. It may ultimately be the case, but right now it's just it doesn't seem to be making the top of the public consciousness. And so from that, if there's going to be a deal to be made, it probably, it, this is where I would agree with Zach, it's got to come from Congress. I think they've got to come forward with some way to meet him. But I don't see the president compromising on the wall at this point. Well, and Democrats used to be in favor of some sort of a wall. Uh, they used to be in favor of border security, but now it seems like things have really changed. But uh, let me ask you, um, Zach, what's wrong with border security? Why has that all of a well, sudden become taboo with Democrats? You know, I, I don't think that it has. I think that the, uh, what I agree with Chris is I think the president outlined in his uh, campaign that there would be a wall, and that is now basically uh, fenced him in, so to speak, in a way that he can't not negotiate out of that deal. I think that the uh, Democrats historically have voted uh, very strongly for border security. In fact, there have been Democrats that have voted in favor of uh, some of that border security being a wall. At this point, though, if you draw a line in the sand and say that you, unless you get five billion, we're not going to reopen up the government, uh, I think that we're all in. Uh, we all have a problem. I totally agree with Chris, though, about the fact that there's been a remarkable abdication of responsibility from Congress. Really, over the last decade, they fundamentally haven't passed a budget. They've been operating on continuing resolutions and stopgap measures, which really emboldens and empowers the executive branch to, in many respects, dictate how the budget will be. I think this is the point for Congress to really step up and to re-exert uh, their constitutional responsibility. And I think the fact that the American people actually sent a divided government back to Washington, D.C., they have an expectation they'll do exactly that. 
Well, Chris, how about that? Because um, we have seen uh, this president and the last president, President Obama, hand out those executive orders. Um, so when does Congress say, hey, we have a job to do, too? Well, it looks like that's kind of what they're doing right now. I mean, for them not to pass and not to agree to move forward on, on the stopgap measures this time is really how Congress is supposed to work. And so I, I believe actually the shutdown can end up being a positive thing. It pushes us back to the, to the point to where Congress and the executive branch, Article 1 and Article 2, work in the way that the Founding Fathers originally intended. And maybe that's a positive outcome of what we're going through right now. Because if Congress does disagree with the President's priorities from a spending perspective, then they should not pass that. At the same time, if the President doesn't agree with Congress is supposed to do that, he should veto it. And so hopefully that does bring them together. Back to your original question, and someone can emerge, become the adult in the room, and find a situation where they can agree on it. But getting to the premise of this, and with border security and the wall, you're exactly right. The Democrats supported the wall under President Obama in 2012. And really this has become more of a campaign issue. It's been about Donald Trump's wall than it has been about the wall itself. And I think that's the unfortunate aspect of this, is because if there was a deal to be made on DACA, I can tell you I was involved in a lot of those negotiations with some of our clients in the Senate, and I don't believe that actually was the case. Now, Zach may have information I don't, but if they, right, it seems gentlemen. to me that if there was we're an opportunity to, to make sorry, it, that would be have it. To, sorry to interrupt. We're going to have to end it there. We're out of time. Thank sure. you so much, and uh, Merry Christmas to you guys. We'll see you again. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you. I can't tell you when the government's going to be open. I can tell you it's not going to be open until we have a wall, a fence, whatever they'd like to call it. Yesterday, I gave out 115 miles worth of wall, 115 miles in Texas. And it's going to be built, hopefully, rapidly. I'm going there at the end of January for the start of construction. That's a big stretch, because we're talking about 500 to 550 miles total. It's a 2,000-mile border, but much of it has mountains and region where you can't get across. Now, there may be the case of an Olympic champion who can get over the wall, but for the most part, it's, uh, you, you're not able to do it. Very high. It's going to be 30 feet. After calling our troops all over the world on this Christmas Day, President Trump still has a lot of the battle over the border on his mind. And the president tweeted a short time ago, writing, I hope everyone, even the fake news media, is having a great Christmas. Our country is doing very well. We are securing our borders, making great new trade deals, and bringing our troops back home. We are finally putting America first. Merry Christmas. Hashtag MAGA. With that, let's bring in our panel. Eli Lake, columnist for Bloomberg Opinion. National Security Analyst Morgan Ortegas joins us up the road in New York City. And Charles Lane, opinion writer for the Washington Post. Good evening and Merry Christmas. So your thoughts on the battle at the border, Chuck? Well, uh, the president, it's interesting how this wall even, it sort of changes shape and length and name. It's sometimes called a fence, sometimes called a wall, sometimes called money for border security. I was interested to hear him say, well, we don't need the wall for all, whatever it is, 2,000 miles, just the 500 some odd miles uh, that aren't mountainous. And I think what we're seeing is, and we've, we've already heard that he's modified his ask of the Congress to get a deal on the shutdown is that notwithstanding all the protestations he's putting out, he is modifying his position on the wall, possibly in the interest of bringing an end to this partial shutdown. Um, all along, this has been about posturing on both sides uh, toward those parts of the party base that want to see a struggle over this. Possibly in between the lines of that statement, you see the beginning of the end of this crisis. But it could go on well into next year. Morgan, your thoughts on where things stand with this battle over the border and the shutdown? Well, I don't think anything's changed on Christmas. So when people come back tomorrow from having opened their presents from Santa, the government will still be shut down, unfortunately. And it doesn't look like um, either side is, is really willing to take a loss on this. What we saw earlier last year with the quote-unquote Schumer shutdown where they walked away from the table because of the bad PR spin. So I think the only way out of this is is um, is a broader you know, immigration deal. I don't think they're going to get a full comprehensive package, but the president is going to have to put something on the table to get them to move. Once they go into the new Congress, as we know, uh, the Democrats are even going to have more power as they'll be in control of uh, in control of the House. Um, so what I'm looking for is a long few weeks going into the new year where we're trading for a, a lot of back and forth. But until the president and his team put something like DACA or something on the table um, that will make Democrats salivate, I think we're going to be at status quo. Eli? Mm -hmm. 
What's more important right now for President Donald Trump and for that matter for Nancy Pelosi? Is it to get a deal or to get the wall or is it to show your core supporters that you are willing to shut down the government in order to fight for that wall? I would say for both. Uh, it is the the shutdown actually plays it to their interest at this point. It shows that they are not willing to capitulate, whether it is they're not willing to capitulate in order to get a wall, or in the case of Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, not willing to capitulate in order to give a wall. But it doesn't matter at this point. Actually, the shutdown works uh, in the political interest of both sides. Of course, you're talking about a quarter of the federal government that's shut down right now, and President Trump today had a message for those workers. Take a listen to this. I think uh, they understand what's happening. They want border security. The people of this country want border security. You know, it's not a question of uh, me. I'd, I'd rather not be doing shutdowns. Many of those workers have said to me and communicated, stay out until you get the funding for the wall. These federal workers want the wall. The only one that doesn't want the wall are the Democrats. Chuck, does pressure build on any one side or the other between now and January 3rd, or are we looking at Nancy Pelosi being elected speaker and then getting serious at that point about reopening the government? I don't, I don't know where he gets the idea that the only people in America who don't want the wall are the Democrats, because obviously there are a number of Republicans who are not big on the wall either, although it's true the Republican base seems to support it. Um, no, I think Eli and I have, have kind of agreed on this point already, but it's worth repeating. For the time being, this is about a, a demonstration to your party base that you're willing to have this fight over a big matter of principle, which is either wall or not wall. And I, 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 I also agree with um, that we, if it's ever going to be resolved, it would have to be with some sort of a big a bigger solution than just a smaller amount of money over here or bigger amount of money over there. So uh, these two parties are locked in, you know, a, a struggle that is both internal uh, about proving themselves to their bases and external with each other. Morgan, the Senate comes back on Thursday. Is that when we start to get some serious talk, or or much later? Well, I think we're seeing some, th some things going on behind the scenes. Uh, we're getting lots of reports. Uh, we saw Mick Mulvaney saying on the Sunday shows that, uh, you know, that, there, that there's a number that the administration has presented that is somewhere in between the 1.7 and the 5 um, that they have offered. You know, I think what we're seeing here, as your other panelists have pointed out, um, we're seeing here a real fight, I think an ideological fight. You know, it strikes me, five years ago, you probably would have been able to make uh, a deal over border wall funding much easier, right? Because as the president's pointed out several times, these key Democrat leadership, uh, most Democrats have voted for some sort of wall or fence or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But really what I'm seeing is we go into this 2020 fight, you're really seeing mainstream Democrats who are running for the presidency saying things that used to be deemed pretty radical about abolishing ICE uh, and, and other, and other, you know, calling the, the wall, you know, very tough names, very tough criticism right. from the same people who voted for it. So I think we're seeing a really ideological fight and as we get closer and closer to people running for 2020, I expect the Democrat Party to run further left on this, not more moderate, not more mainstream. All right, let's leave it there.